Assalamu alaikum and greetings. In this video we will solve our first problem and calculate a magnetic flux density. Uh, the first assignment is from our workbook at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, which is at the number 3.2. And it says determine the identity of magnetic flux density at the center of this square. So, with sides of length A, we have a conductor through which current flows I. So, because this is a square, it means all of these sides are equal. Uh, here, it is only drawn to be presented in 3D system, but actually we can use it and draw it like a square. So on 2D system, on this board, this way, so we have a square, all of its sides are equal, have a length of A, and we have a current, I, with this direction, and we need to calculate our magnetic flux density at the center of this square. So, at this point, we need to calculate B. Our task is to calculate only intensity of magnetic flux density, but we will also calculate a complete vector. So, if you, you have a problem, a task, in which it said that you need to calculate intensity, that doesn't mean you need to calculate a complete vector. You don't care about its direction, you only care about its identity. But uh, uh, the task can be to calculate a vector, so we will show you also how can you calculate a vector, not only one component of vector but to calculate it also its direction and identity. So, how can we dissolve? Using Biosavar's law. Uh, if you didn't watch previous video, please watch it. Uh, because we explained all the rules of Biosavar's law and almost uh, everything, every problem that you can get using it and how can you use it. Uh, for different geometrical problems. Uh, our Biot-Savart's law formula says that identity of our magnetic flux density can be calculated as mi zero times the current through divided with 4p times d, where d is the distance of our point where we need to calculate magnetic flux density from our conductor times sine phi 2 minus sine phi 1. You can use note whatever you want, you don't need to use it uh, angle phi, you can use it angle alpha, beta and so on and so on. And don't forget that the unit for magnetic flux density is Tesla. So, how will we calculate our magnetic flux density? Well, we know that if we have a one conductor and we need to calculate at this point, we know how to, use, to calculate the magnetic flux density using this formula. We showed that in our previous video. But what happens if I have a square simply I, I will this complex number solve in steps one by one. I will first calculate magnetic flux density for this length, then I will have this length, then this length, then this length. So it means that, we'll, that I will have four cases, but four simple cases, and at the end I will simply sum up all of my results for every length of this conductor. So, let me just uh, see uh, at which order did I go. 
So, this will be the first case, the second case, the third case, and the fourth case. So, this is my first case. This length, and I will draw it. Okay, I have this length of a conductor with which is equal A, then I have a point P, that, which is the distance where I need to calculate my magnetic flux density. This distance is at the middle of my conductor, so this is A and a half, because it is at the center of our square, the center means where my diagonals are crossed and this is the distance d so I will find. this is the distance t this is p this one is a and a half also this is a and a half so the next thing in order to use this formula, we already said that we must uh, draw this d presents distance, but distance, we must draw this distance to our conductor, so it makes a right angle, angle of, it is a normal angle of 90 degrees, and we did that. Now, from this point, we connect the beginning of our conductor, so this is one beginning, and from this point we connect the end of our conductor. And now we have gotten two angles. First angle is this, the second angle is this, or otherwise. Which is the first? Is this phi 1 or phi, phi 2? How do we determine? We already told, uh, learned it from previous video, that this current determines which current direction determines which angle will be first. So, uh, on which angle the current comes firstly, that is the first angle, our current comes from this direction, so it, this is the first angle, and then it comes out here, and this is the second angle. So, this is angle phi1, and this is angle phi2. We will draw our current I. So the next thing we only have a current and we have this length, this length of a conductor. We need to determine to find what is our D, what is our distance. How can we find our distance? We can find it simply from this picture. Why? We know that we need to calculate We will draw our current direction. And now, in order to determine, to calculate our magnetic flux density, we need to know a current, which we know by our task, and we also need to know the distance of our point from our conductor, D. How can we determine D? Because we know A, the side of our square
we can determine it very easily. Why? Because no, we know that this is at the center of our square where the diagonals are crossed and we know that this center is a and a half. So this is the distance here. So it is a and a half. This is our d. So our d is equal a and a half. The next thing that we must know is to calculate to determine angles phi1 and phi2. How can we determine angles phi1 and phi2? For example, if we have and we have the sides of this triangle, 90 degrees triangle, we always can use our trigonometric formulas for 90 degrees triangles where we know that cosine phi is equal adjacent side through hypotenuse sine of angle phi is equal to opposite through hypotenuse tangents phi is equal sine divided with cosine so it is opposite divided with adjacent side And you can always use this for every triangle, this time. We will not use this, why? Because we can right away see it, what is, this is our triangle, but both cutlets have the same length, a and a half, and also d is also a and a half, which means that this angle here, is equal to this angle here and it is phi1 is equal 45 degrees or 45 degrees also we must remember that the sum of all inside angles of every triangle is 180 degrees the sum of all squares of inside angles are 360 degrees. Sometimes you will determine the angle, some angle, using knowing this. Or if you can, if you want to use cosine or sine, you will need, okay, you have this adjacent 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 side which is a and a half but you would need a hypotenuse for this we don't have an hypotenuse so we would calculate it this is the hypotenuse these are the cathets and we know the formula for how to calculate the hypotenuse for triangle and you will do that if you don't want to calculate it, you can right away use this formula, tangents phi, which is equal to opposite over adjacent side. You have both of this side, you would get that tangents phi is equal 1. 1 tangents phi is equal 1, it's for the angle 45 degrees. Those are different ways how to find this. The same is for the angle phi 2, it is also 45 degrees. Phi 2 is equal to 45 degrees. Now we have everything. Let's now calculate 
the identity of magnetic field at this point from this conductor. We will simply, we know everything. So we have mu zero times the current for P. We know that D is A and a half. So A and a half. We can show these two. Sinus. Phi two. Now, we told you in the previous video that these angles can be have a positive or negative value of an angle. We have determined the absolute, we will say this, this is the absolute value of phi1 and the absolute value of phi2. It is 45 degrees. But these angles can have a negative value. How do we determine the positive or negative value? We determine it. The current direction determines it. So if we have here a first angle and it's normal to our conductor and if this current enters this normal we have we take the negative angle here so phi1 is 45 degrees because the current enters at this normal of this angle it is minus 45 degree but for angle 2 we, we see normal of this angle on the conductor is here and the current comes out from the normal so it is a positive angle it is a positive p and a half now we will have here sinus of 45 degrees minus sinus of minus 45 degrees let's remember once again that sinus of minus alpha is equal minus sinus alpha so it means that our b is equal mu zero mu to p a times sinus alpha. so this sinus minus 45 degrees is minus sinus 45 degrees and this sinus will give us a plus so it will be plus sinus 45 degrees so our b will be equal me 0 and c sinus of 45 degree is square of 2 over 2 and we have sinus this is the sinus of this and we have once again plus this so it's two times sinus of this so we will have that our b is equal to zero and the unit is tesla and this is our b1 from our first conductor Now, we should determine the direction of this magnetic field. We should have done that in the first step, but it's not too late. So, it is very important to see what is the direction of magnetic field of this part of a conductor, what is the direction of magnetic field of this part conductor and every other part. So we could see, do they all create a magnetic field with the same direction at this point here? Or the opposite direction? If it's the same direction, that means that we sim simply sum up all of uh, that magnetic field. If some of them is the opposite, we put a minus of that magnetic field. So. Our first conductor, we have him here. This is our conductor. How do we determine the direction of magnetic field? We always uh, with the right hand rule. We know the current creates a circulating uh, magnetic field. We get a circle. How do we determine the direction of those circles? We put our thumb in the direction of current and our closed fingers shows us 
what is the direction of magnetic field. So, below our conductor, we can see that magnetic field goes from you to the table, but here, where is our point, the magnetic field goes from the table to you. And exactly at the center here, it has only one component, it is parallel to this conductor, and because uh, the direction at this point is a tangent, the tangent would be exactly this. Under 19 degrees, it would be normal to the table, so our magnetic field for this part has a direction from table to you. This. But, what this would be one. What is the direction of magnetic field of this part of a conductor? We do the same. Okay, we have a conductor. We have our conductor. We have a current which is up. We use the same rule of the right hand. And we can see that from this side of a conductor, the magnetic field goes inside the table. But from this side of conductor, magnetic field goes outside the table. Parallel to this conductor magnetic field, because its circle once again presents a tangent, so it is directed towards you. So also here, this part of a magnetic field has the same direction. What happens here? Once again, here, right hand rule, we put, you, we can see that also here, this magnetic field has the same direction, and it goes towards you. This also, we put it here, the right hand rules, it says that for, um, for this side it has a direction towards you. What did we get? We got that all of these parts of a conductor create a magnetic field in the same direction at this point. Because this is a square, this length is the same as this, is the same as this, all of these lengths have a same current, this point is equally distanced from every of this line segment, that means that B1 is equal to B2, is equal to B3, and is equal to B4. We have calculated B1, so we don't need to calculate other Bs. If one length was different, uh, the distance of this uh, point where we need to calculate our mag magnetic field was different, in that case we would have to calculate our magnetic field density for every part of a conductor, but here we can conclude, we can see that all conductors create identical magnetic fields with identical direction. So our resultant magnetic field at the point P, we have this is our resultant magnetic field at the point P, is equal 4 times B1, or 4 times B2, or 4 times B3, because all of this is equal, B1 plus B2 plus B3 plus B4, okay, we will write it that way, it is equal, B1 plus B2 plus B3 plus B4, uh, because all four Bs are equal, we can write it as 4 times B1. And when we put this here, we will get that our magnetic field density is equal to 4 times this, 2 and 2 are 2, uh, four, uh, four it will be 4 divided with 2, it's 2 times 4 mean 1 e square root of 2 b. And the unit is Tesla. Don't remember. Don't forget that. If we need to write this 
as a vector. Firstly, what we must be given is the coordinate system. What is x axis? What is y axis? What is z axis? So, for example, if this was a z axis, z, so we present it like this. That would be that z axis has this direction. This is a z uh, axis towards u. We can see here that this conductor will create a magnetic field in this direction. So this is a direction of my magnetic field. I put it in, let's this put at this point, and this is our z axis. We have our conductor, and it says with the right hand rule, we can see that our magnetic field here has a component only in z axis because it is a parallel. This point here is parallel to this. So here is my conductor. I need at this point, to, it is a tangent, it has also only a z component. So our B1 as a vector has only z component. How do we write a vector? Usually, someone maybe uses other notation. If we have a vector A, it has e, its x components, okay, x, times unit vector is mostly used as i for x-axis plus it has its y component on y-axis, and the unit vector is j, or we call it j, and we have a component at, at z-axis, and its unit vector is k. So, here we can see that if we only have, if our vector is only in z-axis, it has this unit vector k, so b1 is b1 times k. All other magnetic fields creates, if we have this conductor here, also the rule, right hand rule, the current comes towards you, we can see that also this is a tangent, B4, it has the same direction, which we got here. This is actually what we are talking about, Z axis is towards you, and our magnetic field at this point has only this component, so we can write this as a vector, only to add vector 2 mi 0 i square 2 p a times k. If you are given, for example, this, and it's, it told you that this is y axis towards you, we have got that uh, uh, we are determined that our b has this direction, so it would have a direction towards y axis. So here we would only change and write the unit vector j. If it was x-axis, it would be a unit vector i. If it was told that this is a y-axis, the y-axis is not from table to you, but from you to the table, and our magnetic field has an opposite direction towards you, then we would write this as a vector only by adding minus j unit vector because it has an opposite direction from positive this direction so that would be it thank you very much and see you in the next video